exploratory. So the first, we, we had a method of doing it the first time round. This is the second time round and we're hoping to have learned from that. So I'm using suggestion, uh, or one of the suggestions that uh, Roger made with regard to how we do the polls. Um, and I think that's going to work nicely. And Steve will be doing the commentary tonight. Um, but what we're going to be doing is uh, we will do the poll after each image rather than talk it through and then go through them again to, to do the poll. Um, but we will, as usual, so that everybody can see the full extent of the images, we will still have the initial slideshow run through uh, as long as uh, everything works. So the reason I'm talking a little bit is just to make sure that nobody else is admitted into the, or comes into the waiting room whilst I do this, because as soon as I put the slideshow on, I won't be able to see the participant list. But uh, anyway, it looks like we've got everybody that's intending to join has joined. So I'm going to start off by sharing, whoops, sharing the screen. Okay, and then hopefully if I do this, it should start the rolling. No, it's not going to. Okay, so that's the that's the entry for tonight. So we'll move to the first image. Oh, hang on a second. I just admit Brian. Before we do, can yes, I? Yes, sir. Yeah. Please forgive me for interrupting. It, the abstract round is going to be probably different to anything else we ever judge. Uh, as you've seen, there are some fantastic images there. Very, but because it's non-figurative, it might just be worth me reading out a couple of the definitions <coughs> that Jill provided. Oh, sorry, I'm late. It's okay, Brian. Hi, Brian. Fortunately, Brian, there was no fire. <laughs> so, on the introduction to this, on the invitation for entries to this competition, it says the theme will be abstract. Shapes, colours, textures, all will be important here. As an abstract, your image should not represent reality or an object is in its entirety, although it can be created from anything you choose. So that was the specification. The other thing is that just might be worth <coughs> reading the criteria with which we were going to judge Top Dog this season. Just read, just for remind, just for a, a reminder, a refresher. We're changing the criteria on which the audience should rate the images. We are, of course, looking for technical quality, but the emphasis will be an imaginative approach to the interpretation of the theme. 
This does not mean the images have to be manipulated in post-production, though they may, of course. We would be looking for images that give the impression that they've been specifically, re, uh, specifically produced for the competition. That doesn't mean you can't use images for your, from your libraries, but we want to see evidence of creative thought about the actual theme. And I know that's always true, but I think it's going to be particularly true of tonight because, because of the subject. Very difficult to interpret. Thank you, Phil. Okay, no problem. Thanks for that. Much appreciated and uh, <coughs> that certainly helps. Especially if I can get it to actually do it. There we go. Right, blocks. This puts me straight back to the 1960s. I don't know what it is, but about the color, about the processing, about, about the composition, but there's something here that reminds me of 1960s London, of Mary Quant, that 1960s painted furniture. I think that the, that the composition is beautifully balanced. I think the color, although, the colour is startling and yet somehow harmonious. Um, I, I think it's a very, very appealing composition. I think it's, it, I think it's slightly a shame that the elongated rectangle at the top is almost the same colour as the natural background. Yeah. And so I think that a tiny little key line or Invert, if that was the bottom, huh, somehow it might look a little bit more comfortable than it does. But that tiny little—that's the only tiny little criticism I have. I think this is this is absolutely. Stephen, fabulous. can I can I just come in there? That tiny grey um, rectangle you're talking about on the top—I yeah. had that all the time on my screen, and I had it all throughout the competition we had last. It's something to do with the screen sharing, I think. Well, if, if that is, then it should the be better, on the next because it makes it all the better. But yeah. I think it's terrific. And the one curved shape amongst all the other rectangles is just so poignant, I think. I just think this is a great image. Okay, so shall we uh, go to the polls on this one and yep. see what people think? Ooh. So Don't vote Trump, though. No, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> So let's continue. Do go. I get to vote? Yeah, everybody gets to vote. You vote so, if, it's your, if it's your own image. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> it's because that's the way we've run it for every, everything, and as long as it's consistent throughout the season, then that's fine. Okay. So. Okay, everybody done? Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay, share results. So that's a 50% um, score. Hang on, I have to do about five things at once here. So uh, just uh, there we go. Really? Yes. Um, I, I, because I'm two, Andrew and me are both losing. Does that make any difference? Because we only have one vote between the two of us. Okay. Um, you probably do need to yeah. uh, both log in separately to be able to do to uh, to for it's you both to have a vote. It. It's just not worth it, is it? No. <laughs> do as your husband <laughs> says. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this one is Norfolk Shoreline. So this is a um, a, a startling, a stunning, a breathtaking image. Um, I'm very fond of it, but I have I have to confess a little bit of um, knowledge about this. I've bought some of these pictures from the artist in the past. Not this. Not this one. But, um, but something created using the same <coughs> techniques, which I understand are Photoshop-based, and I think that's entirely irrelevant. I do love the fact that the, 
that it, the original subject matter is referred to in, in the title because it, it seems inconceivable that that's got anything to do with the Norfolk coast. Again, we've got beautifully harmonious colours, a wonderful swirling movement, um, no resemblance to anything figurative whatsoever, as, as, as I would hope most of the ab abstract images would be. Um, I just, I don't know how it's done. I, I don't want to know how it's done because it is, it's so, it's so elegant. Um, the colours, the composition, the technique, it's all, it's all wonderful. I commend it to you. Okay, so I'll uh, now, that's uh, for people to decide whether you want to vote this through as it's uh, for selection for the next stage, the final. And has that, everybody voted? Yeah. 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 Looks like it. Share the results. So that's um, <laughs> 71.4. That's a bit accurate, isn't it? Uh, 71.4. So the pass mark to go, well, to, to go to the next stage of decision is 60%. So that would be one that's going um, through to the next or later, potentially later on this evening. St. Cuth Cuthbert Lindisfarne. So Lindisfarne, so, <laughs> so this Lindisfarne, this is, this is the, uh, the figurative element of this tells me that this is uh, the ruins of the priory at Lindisfarne. And outside the priory or just inside the boundary of the Priory is a, a beautiful statue of St. Cuthbert, who's one of the most important of the North Country saints, I think, if not the most important. And I believe this may be something called intentional camera movement, possibly where you open the shutter or you close down the aperture so that you get a very slow shutter speed and then you deliberately move the camera. <coughs> or it, or it may be may be done during may be done on Photoshop and swirled about and all those techniques to achieve that thing. But I can see almost a clear image of Saint Cuthbert's face. I can see the arch from the from the priory um, and the grass, the fabulous lawn that's in front of it. Or at least it was like that when I was there. Um, but by disturbing and disrupting the image to this extent, we have indeed got a, a proper abstract. So the hint of figurative image behind the abstract, I think, gives us an insight into it, gives us a clue, makes us relate to it a little better than a pure abstract. Um, and I think from that point of view, it's a very accomplished image. OK. All right, I'll assume everybody's finished. That's the results. Six. Okay, and stop that. Okay, if you excuse me for one moment, because I'm just going to go back one for a second, uh, so I can put in the... Um, I didn't put in the score for that. There we go. 71.4. Yeah, I can't put in the point four. It's, uh, it wouldn't make any difference anyway, but still, never mind. That will do. Red on maroon. So this is a totally different and much more subtle approach to anything we've seen thus far. It's a combination of two very similar colours, which is obvious to all of you. If you when I first looked, I thought I'd found some ballerina's feet. I saw a ballerina <coughs> on points, a three-legged ballerina on points was there. But I realised it is absolutely abstract, almost 
the effect you get when you put too much paint on the brush and it runs down over whatever you're painting. Uh, it's appealing colours. It's very abstract in that there's no, to my mind, no figurative element whatsoever. Um, I see it might be a little bit like a Mark Rothko when at first sight there's not a great deal to see, but upon careful study and a bit of contemplation, you find more and more. There's a, there's a black mark under the middle ballerina's foot, as it were, which I don't think enhances the picture. But otherwise, the shading and the subtlety of the colours uh, is very appealing. A very, a very nice, a very well thought, well, not a very well thought out, but a very compliant image in terms of the theme. got it as in the jukebox jury that's that uh, uh, uh. cascade oh hang on a minute yeah. sorry sorry uh. the polling does hasn't gone away wait a minute there we go. Stop share results. There we go. Cascade. So this implies that we're looking at uh, a waterfall of some sort, uh, a cascade of water. Again, I think it's intentional camera movement. Um, it, it's almost a cross between water and clouds. And from that point of view, the texture is, is very appealing. And texture seems to be what this image is mostly about because we've only got a very limited color palette that bluey gray the green in the bottom and the white of the foam or the or the surf or the uh or the flowing water so i think it's uh an icm image of some of a waterfall originally but it has been rendered to be completely non-figurative again it's nicely abstract um whether it's as impactful as some of the others we've seen already, I'm not so sure, but well done, whoever did it. Okay, so that's... Okay. Oh. Oh. Sorry, just not wanting to go forward. There we go. Granules. <clears throat> wow. Well, granules of what do you think? Granules of glass? I don't know. It's been heavily processed, uh, massively, I would suggest, massively saturated or boosted, um, and then cropped down. Uh, I can't see anything real in it at all, anything identifiable. But the overall effect, of again, of a relatively limited but vivid colour palette is quite spectacular. Um, and it could fit into a number of, of, of modern art genres. I think these pictures are great, aren't they? I mean, this is such a liberation from, from trying to take a sharp, perfect portrait judged by all the standards, the normal standards. This is, I think, a very exciting subject matter. I think this is a very exciting example of it. Whether, it, whether the massive saturation is visually appealing to everybody i'm not i'm not quite sure but then 
in modern art, you get everything from the absolute vivid to the very, very muted. Um, I don't know if there's anything. It's not a kaleidoscope because there's no symmetry, is there? Or is there? Whatever. I have no idea how it was achieved. But I think it's a very well, a very well produced image. It complies perfectly with the theme and I like it very much. <clears throat> okay, so that one just clips in at 60, call that 62. Oh, sorry. In trouble. Swir uh, circles and swirls. So this is, um, in some ways, not dissimilar to the previous image, insofar as it's an, it's it's an an abstract presentation of lots and lots of particles, <coughs> um, but it's much much more muted, as you can see, and it's got this overlying. Um, white filigree over the top, which is which is very pretty. I see some, a couple of um, a couple of three or four areas where there's a different presentation, where there's little circles like bubbles on one or two of the on one or two of the of the granules, and I I don't know if that enhances or or detracts because. But it does give us, it does take my eye to different places and it makes me flick around the, the picture. Most of these abstracts won't have a focal point, will they? So we can't search for a focal point as we would in a, in a figurative picture. At the same time, is it relaxing to be dancing around this triangle of these three, three bubbled areas? I'm not sure. But again, it is... Um, I mean, it could be in the tape and you wouldn't bat an eyelid, would you? It's just, it is lovely. I, like, I think I might, on a personal level, prefer these muted colours to the really saturated colours, but there is a continuity. I don't know if it's the same artist, the same photographer who produced it, probably not, but they're both lovely and this is very attractive too. Okay, again, sneaking in at 64.3. Blue glass. Well, for creativity and impact, you couldn't do better, could you? It sticks you straight in the eye. The We've got this lovely symmetry. We've got these beautiful, beautiful blues. I have no idea what it is, or what it was. Why have I got something covering my picture? Hang on, a yeah. minute. Where is it? Stop. Let's try that. There you go. Sorry about that. There you go. I can imagine a chandelier, perhaps, or. <clears throat> something hanging down from the ceiling and then given some kind of wide angle, taken with a wide angle lens or distorted deliberately with a fisheye application. Um, again, I can't immediately see absolute symmetry of the objects, although it's a beautifully symmetrical, bisymmetrical image. I think the limited color palette, all these blues and going to whites is very, very appealing. Um, I really can't fault it. It fits. It, it it was once figurative, but it's been manipulated to the abstract. Uh, it's very very nice colours, 
nicely presented, super image. Ninety two per cent. Brutalism. Brutalism, an architectural style developed by Le, Le Corbusier, the French architect. I think he built a hospital or something in France, and then it was this, I hesitate to use the correct phrase, which is fair-faced concrete. I think this might be the Barbican near Liverpool Street, um, which adopted that style, built in the 1960s, was it? You can see all the board marks from all the shuttering, <coughs> from all the shuttering, and you can see that the concrete has not weathered well at all. And I don't know if early in the life of this building that was a major, appeared to be a major fault or flaw. But of course, 40 years on, it has become, it's mellowed and it's, it's got all this mold on it and it's all this stuff on it. And that has made it more attractive than when it was half weathered. And the author here has very cleverly taken a small section of it, cropped it down so that it's not, apart from the railing, not easily identified as a building. It's increased the, the shadow element so that we've got pieces that where background has disappeared. And that's taken our ability to understand the image as a figurative image away. So we've got what is essentially what is essentially just about an abstract image. Um, I don't know if a key line might have helped. I'm not sure because it disappears into the background slightly. So it's hard to purely identify exactly what the author wanted us to look at, although not that difficult. Um, it's different to the other things we've seen tonight, but it's no less strong for that um, yeah a very well accomplished a very well accomplished presentation Cascade. So another, I suspect, another intentional camera movement shot. Um, very vivid in colours, bright pink and bright green or lime green. The colours of high visibility jackets. <coughs> so uh, I like, the, I very much like the way that the vertical movement of the camera which has followed the vertical alignment of whatever the original picture was, has created these subtle wavy lines. Um, and that I think is a very, that is a great accomplishment in terms of the speed with which the, sh the camera was moved for the duration of the shutter being open. Um, again, we have got some massive saturation being applied to whatever it was originally. Um, and I don't know again whether slightly muting the colours or ch would have would have made it more attractive to the eye or not. But it's it fits the theme perfectly. It is undoubtedly appealing, uh, and again wouldn't be out of place in any modern art museum in the world. Okay, 
Jesus. So. Curves. So this is an image I'm as sure as I can be without knowing it deliberately created for the competition. <coughs> and this is exactly what we all wanted to happen. This is exactly what we were hoping to achieve by changing the, the criteria. I think what we're looking at is, I mean, it reminds me of the old fashioned um, cinema film, the stuff that came on the, on the, ro on the reels and escapes occasionally but it's not that because the holes are not consistent, but it's perhaps three pieces of filing card or one very long piece rolled up with different lights in. And we had this wonderful effect, this teardrop effect of the, of the curves. It's a slight shame that the very right hand end has been clipped of the purple curve. It would be nice if that were in there because even though it is a piece of abstract art and it isn't an image of a building or a, or a portrait, I still think that that severe line on the right-hand side slightly, slightly lessens the quality of, the, of the, the overall image. But it doesn't matter if abstracts are sharp or not, I, don't, I think, but this, for me, the sharpness of the card, especially in the yellow curve, is very attractive somehow if it was all blurred if it was all soft like the purple one it wouldn't have for me quite as much impact so for creativity if as i suspect this was done carefully and thoughtfully and deliberately for the competition that is that deserves your maximum your maximum appreciation just that one little one little edge if, if it's if it's in there in the original, it'd be nice to just stretch it to the right and have that curve in. But a very good piece of work. Well done. Mm. Blackcurrants, grapes. No, this is marvelous. This is um, like swirled paint on a canvas, as if you've taken the wet paint and with a palette knife or a stiff brush, you've stirred in paints of different colors and produced this amazing image. I can only assume <coughs> that a blackcurrant bush was the original was the original subject matter how on earth it's been made into this is utterly and completely beyond me um but that that's part of what makes it so intriguing i think it's visually very very appealing indeed you can follow the lines around all day it reminds you of also it reminds me of paint but um a splendidly original piece very nice indeed <clears throat> Colour waves. Wow, these get better and better. I mean, this, this is m marvelously appealing. I mean, it is just such a, a stunning image. I can see little bits of little bits of 
identifiable shapes. I can see some feet, some dentures, <laughs> all sorts of little things in there. Um, again, the colours have been carefully selected. There's only five or six colours in there. The dominant, the blue, the, the intensity of the blue is just fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And it goes so well with the, with, with the yellow too. It just works beautifully. I'm trying to spell a word there. I'm trying to imagine that there's a, there's a, a wow or something in there that there isn't. I don't know why I'm seeking the, some, something real in, in what's a beautifully abstract, abstract image. Waves. Extraordinarily appealing. Very, very attractive. I think I'll get a print of all of these. It's lovely. center okay so this is an enhanced uh an enhanced image of the future world is it the future world dome at the Ep epcot center in uh <coughs> florida and they light this dome up it's uh, it's a disney it's a disney theme park i think it's about 40 years ago they opened this place and it was extraordinarily futuristic 40 years ago and somehow still manages to be but they had monorails and all sorts of things there and this dome which is i think it's the future earth dome or something like that uh is i think it's what they call a geodetic structure and it's very cleverly and beautifully lit and the author here has uh try and enhance has tried to enhance even further that that wonderful lighting so again, we have some very vivid colors. And I presume the night sky makes, makes the curve. Um, again, bear in mind how black the background is to these images. That it could have been, I don't know, would it have been better with the key line so we could see the edge of the canvas as it were. But it's something that we know to be real because lots of us have seen it made abstract by the nature of its structure and by enhancing the lighting. Gorilla. Gorilla. Indeed. Now, this is a one for Brian Fleming to talk about, really. Can you see a face, Brian? I certainly can, and a nostril. And a and nostril, a and an eye, and a nose. It's, yeah. um, it's the bark of a silver birch. All there. It's the bark of a silver birch. Uh, what fun it might have been to copy it, flip it, and join it down the middle and get the whole gorilla's face. But um, yeah. Somebody has got the eye. They've seen they've seen the, the silver birch bark, and they've seen the gorilla's face in that in that structure, uh, and then cropped it. And I wonder if they put that little highlight, that little uh, light in the eye there, to make it even more animal like. It's a, it's it's what the judges would. I don't like to use these cliches, but it's what the judges would call well seen and um, very cleverly spotted, all been darkened down uh, to make it more subtle. 
and more gorilla-like. So very clever, well done. Okay, so what I will suggest now this, <clears throat> excuse me, that's um, halfway through the uh, images. Um, I think we are all rather aware of staring at the screen all the time. So would it be worth us just taking a five minute break? Good idea. Um, uh, and then uh, that also This is uh, an that, open discussion, by the way. It's not. Um, it's not just me. So do feel free to interrupt and add your three penneth. Okay. This looks like, the, the, to me, the same author as the opening opening picture. It has the same appeal, the same technique, um, and as the title implies, this one shape different to all the rest just as the first image did it doesn't um impact me as much as the first image did maybe because that was novel and this is a a similar thing if this was the first one i'd look in at i'd be as i'd be raving about it as much as i did the first one maybe we've got to be careful about putting two images through which are of or which are of similar style but that doesn't um that doesn't dilute the value of this one at all. I think it's very nicely done. It's utterly and completely abstract. It's got a time scale to it. It's got a 1960s feel to it, as did the first image we saw. It's beautifully balanced in the frame. It's a comfortable picture. It's got that one little intriguing element, which is the uh, ellipse where everything else is a circle. Uh, the color palette is lovely can't really say anything bad about it. It's a lovely, lovely image. That one actually reminds me of a turtle. <laughs> Red being the body. You've got the four legs and the blue, big, the light blue, pale, sort of pale blue bit in its head. I know you don't drink, Bill, but do you take acid? No. <laughs> I can see what he means. <laughs> yeah. Key theatre. Wow. I mean, this clearly is by the same author as we had before, but dare I say it, this one's even, even more exciting, even more intriguing. How it was ever the key theatre, I'm, I'm really not sure. But um, I guess there's water and there's green trees. If I'm imagining viewing the key theatre from the railway walk, looking over the River Stour towards the, towards the building, I can kind of imagine where these colours came from. But it's just an absolutely wonderfully pleasing soft swirling image yet with bright colors i think it's absolutely superb and as i say i have a vested interest in that i've got very similar work on my wall and i think it's fabulous <clears throat> Walk on a stormy beach. And so it is. So what I can see just the barest hint of a figure in a pinky beigey colour. 
I see the sand dunes and some dark grass or something growing on the horizon of the sand dunes and a very cloudy sky, some extraordinary rays of light. And then the whole thing rendered down out of reality into this wonderful blend and melded colours. It has a symmetry about it that might take some of the tension out of the picture. If the picture was less symmetrical, it might be even more tense, might even have even more tension in it, but that's entirely subjective point of view. It's, in, it's figurative enough to know that it's a man on a beach or a woman on a beach with some sand dunes on a cloudy day, which is great, and it's abstract enough for it to be anything you want it to imagine, anything you want it to imagine it to be. So it's a very cleverly presented, very well thought out, very pleasing image. Synapse. Synapse, okay. Well, a synapse, isn't that the um, electrical signal that goes between two nerve endings in your brain? And Something isn't this like a conch shell? I'm not... I'm a bit confused by this image because it's not entirely abstract in that I can see what it is, and yet it's not sharp enough for it to be <clears throat> pleasing as an image of a, of a conch shell. I think it's a conch shell. Um, and maybe afterwards somebody could explain the title. So I'm not sure how well this complies with the spec or fits, or fits the bill. I'll leave you to decide. You do that. I've got to give it a one because it won't take zero. <laughs> Storm. Oh, I'm not sure of the name of the artist that this reminds me of, but this, you see quite a lot of this work in oils where the artist paints on a number of subtly different colors and then scrapes them off and scratches it um there's a guy called ross loveday who does this kind of work in oils and this this reminds me a lot of that of that style of, of work as with most abstracts there's nowhere for your eye to settle and there's quite a dark patch in the top right hand corner, which maybe is a bit distracting. A tiny bit more cropping of whatever the original image is might make the picture more comfortable in the frame. I might also invert it because it's slightly, that would leave it darker at the bottom and it's nicer to have a dark base, I think, and a light top, maybe because of skies and things. Um, I like the green, I like the limited colour palette, I like the subtlety, I also like the fact that if it is grasses we're looking at, um, that there's just a tiny element of them that are almost sharp enough to identify as grass, and yet below it softens down. So yes, a truly abstract image, I, well, what I suspect was once, what was it called again? Storm. Storm. Moving grass, perhaps. Grass moving in a storm. Very nice, too. A nice, a nice shape. A nice letterbox shape. But I would, yeah, I would reduce the size slightly to reduce the effect of the, of the, of the shadow. Rock, paint.
painting. Which is indeed what it is. I wonder if this is that wonderful place in France where they found images by Neanderthal man created thousands of years ago. Or whether it's a modern interpretation of that. How, whatever has been, whichever one it is, it's been enhanced with saturation because I'm sure you don't get these really bright colours when you paint on rocks, especially if you rub colour pigments in with your hands. You don't get this finesse. But it's it's a very it's a very pleasing thing to to wonder about these fronds, these almost seaweed type images, and again this fabulous blue. Is that called cyan? That blue. Right, yeah, cyan's um, much lighter. Say again. Cyan's a lighter one. Um, it's, it's, well, royal blue, perhaps. Royal blue. Cyan's, there's a little patch at about four o'clock that's a bit cyan -y. Okay, well, it's it's got a, a, we talked about, or at least Jill specified texture when she was talking about this round. So it's not just about colours, it's not just about sight, is it? It's about the fact you could almost feel if you rub can rub your hand on that rock and you can feel the texture against the palm of your hand. Um, sandstone or some such coarse rock. Um, what what the treatment has been, I'm, I have no idea, but it's uh, it fits the bill. It was once figurative and is now abstract. It's got enough color in it to be interesting and detail. It's got texture. It's a very good presentation. Well done. If I could interject, Steve, there, it does remind me of a lot uh, of the mineral formations that you get in crystallography, mm. looking at rocks, so when they've been polished. Yeah, indeed. Petal patterns. I once took a photograph of a of a pretty girl who had ruby red lipstick on, and I took it by putting the camera down on the desk and taking it upwards. We've got a nice profile of her lips and her nose, and when I look at this, I can just see a horribly distorted version of that picture. <laughs> I can see her nostril, the curve of her nostril, and a dreadfully distorted pair of lips and some damage and I find it really quite disconcerting. I can't actually see the petals for the life of me. I find that a very I find that a very disturbing image because it almost looks like a damaged face to me. And I'm finding it very difficult to see it otherwise. But perhaps it's one of those under the ice. It does look like it, doesn't it? Jill does, and lots of other people have done. It, it, I guess that's what it is. But I find the final, the final product really quite um, disturbing. But maybe you can see the petals better than I. That'd give me nightmares. Just a bit of time just to make sure everybody's voted on that one. Yep, there we go, that's better. Yellow haze. This one works splendidly, doesn't it? it I don't know why it's valid to guess what it what it started as, but I suspect it's looking through glass. The glass has got frost or water on the uh, <coughs> on the outside, and beyond it are leaves and flowers. Um, and then the whole thing has been treated and disrupted and reconstructed into this fantastic abstract image. Uh, it's incredibly pleasing 
I don't know if I'm looking at bits of a monstera here, um, but I, but it, yeah, it, it's extraordinarily well done, and it could easily be on the edge of impressionism, couldn't it, as a painting, an impressionist painting. I might have done away with the 10% of the left-hand side there. I don't know that that darker yellow uh, contributes to the overall effect because um, it pulls me over to the left and the bright yellow in the middle is so appealing. And these beautiful shadows in the, what I'm going to call monstera leaves, they probably aren't, is also appealing. So I might have been inclined, if it were me, to chop off that left-hand 10%. Um, but it's a mute point. It's, uh, it's a very, very, a very uplifting image. I like it very much. Ooh. Crescent. Crescent, yes, I see. So we have the um, the London eye against the dark sky or a darkened sky turned on its side and creating this crescent shape. It is quite figurative for an abstract presentation, but it's been, because it's been turned on its side, turned to monochrome, the, map, the, the contrast slide has been taken to the end. The clouds don't really look like clouds. I guess it just about, just about complies with the abstract theme. It could almost be, <coughs> could almost be the um, space station, couldn't it? Almost looks like it's in outer space where the sky goes black. And, um, and these are little steam particles coming out of the thruster rockets. Yes, it's different too, it's different to the rest. And for its originality, uh, it deserves your attention. Rockpool. Rockpool. This is um, a little similar to the one that we saw with the early on with the moving with the water, the moving <coughs> water moving even more. Um, but this, I think, is maybe slightly better as in terms of how comfortably it sits on the on what I'm going to call the canvas because it's like a painting. It's um, and this eye in the middle, this triangular eye in the middle, drags your attention to the center and makes you dream up all different things that it might be. Uh, but it, I suspect as it was, it was water and grass or water and trees, and it's been manipulated and disturbed and disruptive and deconstructed to create this abstract image. I like the tension that's created by the centroid of the picture being off center. Um, and the beauty of, and, the, and the softness of the whole thing. The whole thing's taken out of any concept of focus by movement and by, and by treatment. A very good image. Encircled. Encircled. 
Mm. I think it was once a sunflower. And it's been tinted in two halves. So it looks like the eye of a monster from the alien film. Um, the little tentacles, the little whatever is left of the flowers of the sunflower um, face are all blurred, aren't they? I wonder. So they've been softened, I suspect, in the after in the in the mm. after treatment, and we've got these two slightly conflicting colours: the orange and the purple. I'm not, and it's not quite a square either. It's it's not quite a square crop. It's an odd proportion. I'm not sure about this one. We're a very hard to please audience, aren't we? Mm. Yep. Hidden toadstools. Very well hidden. I'm suspecting that this might be the same author as the blackberries, was it? The green one. Mm -hmm. um, but again, <coughs> it looks it looks very much like an abstract oil painting beautifully luscious thick oil paint dragged across the canvas and twirled around i can see a mouse on the left hand side but brian's already spotted that i'm sure i have green yeah. eye green nose and yeah. a, a nice pink yeah. tail <laughs> <laughs> got that one. i'm inside your head mr fleming <laughs> yeah Gary. and now the and the title of course tells me to look at the white areas as as mushroom tops as fungi so that guides me nicely uh, i don't think i needed that i don't think i needed it to be and I, I don't think i needed to be reminded of the original subject matter because this works for me uh, as an abstract image it works for me completely non-figuratively i like the swirling color it just looks like paint it looks like cleverly applied mixed and on the canvas paint Extraterrestrial. Indeed. So if you go far enough into the deepest depths of space, <coughs> got these jellyfish that exist in, in a void, and this is one of them. <laughs> it's absolutely fabulous. You do see extraordinary jellyfish when you're diving or watching a Richard Attenborough film, David Attenborough film, but this... This looks exactly like some space monster or something from the from the darkest, deepest parts of the of the ocean. And a nice key line holding it all in. Exactly, that's mm. good. And that um, I think we've lost some of the appeal of some of the pictures because of the background being so black and parts of the images being so black. So this key line works really well. And yes, it does look alien. And it is utterly abstract. And although there is a certain line of symmetry or just off the horizon, it's not true symmetry. So it's got that appeal. And not for the first time tonight, we have this extraordinary luscious blue, which, um, which is splendid. And I like the little pink flame near the top left-hand quarter. The sharpest bit of the whole image. Very attractive, very attractive indeed.
Silver Birch Trees. So again, we've got um, some intentional camera movements. And again, the author has moved the camera parallel with the general line of these silver birch trees. <coughs> mm -hmm. So we've got the lovely white streaks, which I guess came from the from the light on the bark, the white bark. The blue, which I guess came from the sky, and the green, which came from the leaves. I have to say, of all the ICM pictures we've seen, this seems to me that one of the most harmonious um, because it's, I think the trick with these pictures is to try to get the speed with which you move the camera consistent with the period for which the shutter is open. And if you do it too fast, you get utterly blurred. If you do it too slow, you can see what it was and that isn't quite the point. So I think this one kind of meets the halfway point. And again, the key line tells us exactly where to look. How come the dots are still sharp? Is that the what? Dust? The is sense that dust. Sorry, dust sense on dust. the sensor is still sharp. Oh yeah. Couldn't be probably got me down at F22 or something like that to get a shot like this. Yeah, looks a bit odd. Does need a clean up. You're quite right. Sorry, whoever that was. <laughs> the last image uh, <coughs> excuse me last image of the evening and this is monkey puzzle yes so a figurative subject taken traditionally with a nicely <coughs> out of focus background and then color manipulated to create the abstract element of the overall image. So we've got purple and green, which I think is, a, they're two harmonious colors, aren't they? Um, and these lovely highlights of what I presume was the light, the sunlight or the, the natural light on the edges of the leaves. It's kind of, it's quite tightly cropped. The original was tight, tightly cropped. And of course, maybe that was the whole of the picture. No, it wouldn't be that shape, would it? Um, yeah, so a good attempt to make a realistic image abstract by going extreme on the colour. I think the, um, the green and the purple go well together. I couldn't have been more pleased to have been chosen for this, than for this round. It's my kind of stuff. It's absolutely lovely. Yeah, I think you're probably the best person to go for this one with your art knowledge, Steve. Well, it's delightful. It's been absolutely brilliant. Well done, everybody. Okay. So let's just get... My screen's got a little bit more on than... Uh, yours has so what i'm going to do now is we're going to go to look at how the competition has um, scored and so we're going to look for basically the criteria is 60 and above so that's whoops daisy that's what we're going to look at we can sort by the best scores first and we'll look at them in the light box. Okay. So, <clears throat> top score is blue glass. So we, we won't go through who the authors are just at the moment. Um, so blue glass, uh, color waves with 86, key theater, 79, extraterrestrial was 77, Norfolk shoreline, 71, Hidden Toes Store 69, Circles and Swirls 64, Rock Painting 62, and Granules 62. And if anybody else is checking the scores, then hopefully that absolutely tall tallies up with uh, what you thought. Now, the, the way the competition um, 
runs is that uh, the top eight go through, I believe, uh, which means that everything, <coughs> excuse me, everything through to uh, circles and swirls is definitely through. But because we've got a tie between uh, rock painting and granules, what I'm going to try and do now is make a poll as to for you all to vote again as to which one of these goes through. Is that all clear to everybody? I dropped yeah. out. I, I dropped out. Sorry, can you say it again, Phil? Sorry. Yeah, certainly. Okay, so the top eight go through. These are sorted yeah. in score order. So that means that that means everything through to to circles and swirls. Yeah, that is through. But Brilliant. Rock painting and granules both score sixty-two. So I'm just going to show them each again and run the poll again. Uh, for people to re-vote against those two. So basically it's a it's a it's a it's a shootout between those two. Can I just have you changed the rules, Phil? Uh well I think it's eight, isn't it? Yeah, but it we says if yeah. there once we've been through all the entries, we'll review the held back images. If there are eight or fewer of them, they'll go through to the final. If there are more yeah. than eight, then we will ask the audience to vote on which ones to put through. That's what I'm doing. Are you? Well we've so the so basically well, I know what you're doing, but does that comply with what the rules were? Shouldn't aren't we supposed to review them all? And well, no, but you've already so all right, we can do if you like, but we've already sure. no, scored not... the um, no, I don't mean you. I mean if if that's what, but basically because we're polling percentage of votes, we already know that down to circles and swirls. Uh, they have had the highest yeah. scores through the competition. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's only the last two that are above sixty but tying. Um, my view was that we basically it's now a, a chance to um, vote between those two. So I'll make a treasury treasury decision at the moment, unless uh, we could, <laughs> if, we, if you want to hang on five minutes, so we can poll as to which way you want to do it. But I think that's the no. fairest way because during the competition, it's, you know, the, the, the top seven are definitely through. Um, so I'll go back to what I was intending to do, which is to show again, rock painting and granules, and we'll vote all of, vote again and see if there's a, a direct winner between those two. Okay. Um, one, gets a, one gets a yes, one gets a no. One, one should get a yes, one should get a no, yeah. So this is, um, <laughs> hang on a second, a minute, I'll just clear my screen of something. Okay, so this one is the rock painting. And... Do you think you should just show them both again in full screen before we vote? Before we do it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hang on a second then. Think, just... I think it might yeah, okay. be fairer. All right. Okay. Ah, that's more difficult. Sorry. I didn't mean to make yeah. life awkward. No, no, no. It should. I would have thought it should have held it, but it didn't. Two, it's going to go okay. Sorry, uh, I could, it, it has to be, it won't take it unless it's better than, so it wouldn't have made any difference. So, there were the, there the, No, it doesn't. It doesn't let you select it, or it didn't. I've tried it several times because I've had a run through myself. So oh, we're going through them all now. But never mind. Let's uh, just stop that. Okay, I can try it if you like. It's never. No. 
let's try it. No, it, <laughs> no, there we go. Sorry, I obviously was too impatient before. So there we go. So there's that one. Or that one, rock painting or granules. Okay. Okay, so that's got a score of 64.3%. <laughs> it's gone up a little bit. It's getting exciting. You lied. There we go. Um, should surely be the reciprocal now. It should be. Should be. <laughs> but who knows? This is live TV, folks. <laughs> They're not valid. They're not valid. You're a fraud. Didn't get, didn't get them in quickly enough. You're a fraud. Fake. Fake news. Weird. Where's oh, this going? Uh, no. <clears throat> Okay, yep. Right, so that's the three percent. So granules gets it. Yes. Okay. okay, so let me just stop <laughs> share the results and now for your delectation. Okay, so um would anybody I'll just run through the ones that uh, that were winners again then, and but I'll just re-score if I can. There we go. Um, to give that its new score, sixty-four. Right. Good. Okay. Okay, I'll put those into the light box. Right, there we go. So those are the images going forward um, for tonight. Anybody want to make comments about these images? And then I'll chart the or the rest of the images and we'll see if there's if anybody wants to make any comments about other images. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Steve was, um, first of all, I'd like to thank Steve because I think he's done an excellent <coughs> appraisal of all these pictures um yeah. something that's right up his alley yeah. um now the one here color waves steve said oh i think i could see some writing i mean can i see the word wave yeah okay yeah the red w yeah. a uh red again v yeah. the green and e i don't know yeah i can, I can see that looking at things i suppose so i've got to ask they uh, color it? waves it so actually, it's it's yours. I, actually, it? what I could do is to. Um, was it yours, Jen? No, it's so roses. No, no, I guess it's roses. It is roses. Rosy. It had roses fingerprints on it. I thought. Was that the <laughs> word wave in there, Rosie? It was actually. I didn't intend to have a word in it, and it certainly doesn't. Insert doesn't. It it was bottle tops. Actually, they all have all have a little foot on the top of them. You oh, can right. see that wine we were drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fantastic. As you say, it had my fingerprints really on the It's fantastic. Hang on, I'll see. That's wonderful. You can't see. Just um, a week's worth of bottle tops. <laughs> ah, I see. <laughs> just just a weekend. Heavy, oh. I was going to say a heavy weekend. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm, really is fantastic. I must admit, I was I was I was trying to figure out all the time it was up, and I thought I, it, there's bits on here you think I sort of look familiar, but no yeah, idea. That is absolutely brilliant. Dave. 
It was when um, Steve said he could see dentures and a foot. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I felt like saying, and what are you on? But I didn't. But yes, you can see feet, can't you, in some of them. Yeah. Now And now you've said it. But I, I still can't see the dentures. <laughs> could you tell us where they are? Yeah. <clears throat> it does have the illusion of tapering to mm. the right. It looks yeah. like the right side is narrower than the left side, but I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's just an illusion. You can't really make that happen, can you? So, so I'll... Yeah, I see what you mean. Who, whose was extraterrestrial? Love that. Sorry, I can't hear what... It, it was Rosie. Oh, what, extraterrestrial? Yeah. Extraterrestrial was oh, Rosie. Yeah. That's Rosie as well, yeah. Brilliant as well. How did you do <laughs> that one? Absolutely brilliant. Well, that was a was a, was an egg type. I know it was a, about a, a, an egg time, but it was about nine inches high, turned on its side, and it was all uh, yellow. And anyway, I messed around with it in filters and wow. liquidized it and, and all sorts of things. And, that's what did one come about after you'd drunk all the wine from the bottle top? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Rosie, I, I think, Ro Rosie, you must be getting better because there was a time when we asked you how you did these things and you couldn't remember. So, <laughs> you, so either you're getting used to the wine or uh, you're not drinking as much, I suspect. <laughs> well, I think it's probably a combination of both of those. <laughs> Yes. It's me. It's Bill. Who is yeah. me? Bill. Bill Hiscott. Bill. 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 Oh. I know. Well, I love both, but Norfolk yeah. Shoreline. Is... Keith Theatre is, is wonderful. Well, the Norfolk Shoreline both one. Both of them are fabulous. I've, it's the mug I was, I was drinking earlier. Oh, sorry, not the mug. I've had it printed onto the mug. Both Bills. <laughs> um, but uh, it's something I was doing a lot of during the first part of lockdown when I was on furloughed. But then once, I'll have to go back to doing a bit more of it, but once, um, um, you know, uh, lockdown was eased, I, I stopped, started getting back out to do more proper landscapes, so I, I stopped doing it. But I'll have to do more of it. Yeah. Mm. So oh, how yeah, did you do it? Yeah, how do you do it? Um, Don't tell them, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quiet, Steve. The tutorials all over the internet for it. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, it's they're really fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's a Photoshop technique, but uh, it's it's something. And there's even Facebook groups for it. Um, but I do, I do a bit more than what the normal, what most people do. Mm -hmm. The ones Steve's got are a bit different from that. Um, they're all portrait, and um, they're of a black surround. They have quite nice colours. Oh, wow. So that is your, sorry, Steve's disappeared off my screen, but that's one of your images, is it, that he's holding up? I can't see him at the moment. No, he's disappeared Say off Say something, Steve, we'll be able to hear you. There we are. This it's, one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's the yeah. fantastic. Kind of swirly tartan. Yeah. That's mm. lovely. Yeah. They're superb. So another one, uh, blue glass, Jan, that's yours. Mm. What, it, what <laughs> is it? Oh, um, <laughs> it was a, a sculpture through glass, and I just took it and I've cropped it right down to that portion of it. And yes, I have played about with it with a vignette and various yeah. other things to, to just soften the edges and make it look slightly less just like a load of blue glass, really. Is that is that over a queue? That what? Yes, Dale Chihuly. Chihuly, mm. yeah. Fabulous artist. Yes. Is this the first time we've done an abstract competition in the club? I think, I think so. so. Certainly since I've been a member. But it's wonderful. I think it's really it yeah. been absolutely fantastic. Great. Yes. I think the difference, I have, I have Bill, to is... Say I... Sorry. Sorry, Karen. I was going to say, I have to say, I didn't realise how abstract we were meant to go. <laughs> um, and the, these winners are just gorgeous. I, yeah. I, I'm with you, Lorraine, because yeah. I, well, okay, yeah, the blue glass did okay, but when, before 
they were voted on, I thought none of mine are anywhere near as abstract as yeah. as the yeah. as, as yeah. those that were coming up. The people have got some fabulous ideas. Yes. yes. Be nice to see some of those that didn't make the top eight in a moment. If that, if everyone's yeah. okay with that. Yep, sure, oh, this, no was, this was the hidden toadstool. Sorry, before we go, because I love the. Yeah, that's mm. Roger, isn't it? Uh huh. Yeah. I enjoyed the green one. It was the green one yours as well, Roger? I, I really enjoyed that one. Is there a certain. Um, Physicality about the hidden toadstools. Yes, you know, it's got it's got more texture. It's less obvious what it is, and it's so you can view it more just as a it's painting. Tricky. Did you eat those magic mushrooms after or before? <laughs> Over <laughs> toadstools, Brian. I look like that. I'm it. Can't eat toadstools. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who's was um, the circles and swirls? That's Jill. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and granules? Uh, Derek. Granules is, yeah, Derek's, I think. It's Derek. Yes, it's Derek's, um, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just, if I just close that down for a second um, and uh, cancel that, that for a that second. Image is definitely narrower on the right than on the left. Hang on. Sorry, which that one? Yeah. No, it's an optical illusion. I know, yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's good. That's, so that's just the, so everybody can see the uh, full set of uh, marks. Um, and now we'll have a look at all images. The light box, if anybody wants to ask any questions. Oh, yeah. They're mine, Andrew. They're marvellous, yeah. Andrew. Love that first one, Andrew. Oh, good. good blocks. Yeah, the blocks I think works better than the circles, doesn't <clears> it? Um, because it's it fills the yeah entire sort of image. And what about curves? That yes, film that's um, one. No, that, that. Yeah, that was mine. Mark. Mark. Yeah, it's Mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, mm, yeah, I liked. Mm. Is, are they competition? Uh, Sorry? Did you make it specifically for this competition? Yes, I did. Yeah, um, it was basically as you as you surmised. It was three file dividers bent over on each other and then backlit in the dark. Mm. Lovely. Mm. Yeah, very very good. The um, very clever, very simple. The, the birch trees that um, was towards the end. I really like that one. Uh, mm -hmm. I think. Without, you know, you can get rid of those sensor dust spots. I think that would make a lovely print on the wall. Yeah. Tori was the undoing of that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose is that one then? Who's Me. Oh. <laughs> what yellow haze? Yeah, I think you need to clear your sensor. <laughs> How about yellow haze? Sorry, I didn't hear who the silver birches were. It was me, Jan. Oh, sorry. I like that. Thank you. Yellow haze. That's Jan. That's mine. Wow. Um, yes, that was lovely. Thank you, Gardens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I just, it's funny. Steve said about taking, perhaps cropping it down on the left. And I tried that. Um, and I was really in two minds. But I felt that to, to make it look slightly, or to make it look balanced, taking that out, I lost a lot of the shadow shape. Mm. So I decided to leave it in, but I yeah. put your hands up when that one was on the screen to make it a square. I really liked it as a square. Yes, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I did the same thing. Yeah. yeah, square crop, Jan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll have a play with that then. Okay. Let's just. Uh, any others for any more? What about the petal <laughs> patterns? The, the red one that. Oh, don't no! Don't about. look at that one. <laughs> that. That makes so my one? cheek hurt. So which one? Sorry, <laughs> 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 That was the one that 
Steve like was little. very worried about, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Can I show you why? It, well, it just looks like a gash. It looked like, yeah, I find it really, really disturbing. Yes, it yeah, like I, I do. I agree with you. Mm. Here we go. Come on. I wonder, <clears throat> can I just say, I meant to say it in the critique, and, it, and I forgot that the gorilla made out of the silver birch bark. I just, I really loved it, and I wondered if monochrome might flatter it. Better. Even more. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. If we did this as a, as a club competition, what would a judge make of it? Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> well, I, I think that that's, a, I was going to say earlier, I think even if we had had um, an abstract competition in the past, I think without the guidance from the, you know, saying exactly what it, what it should be like, then I think people would sort of swing between trying to make it almost like an image and almost abstract. So I think as long as you get a judge who's open enough